today. This is Wade Norris here on Ultimate Politics on 1510 AM and 1570 AM, Mile High Sports Radio. Today we have some great guests, Miss uh, Nancy LaPlaca from Energy Justice and Leslie Glustrom. Am I saying that right? Glustrom. Glustrom. I see it. Rhymes with West. Uh, from cleanenergyaction.org. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Wade. Thank you, Wade. All right. Just tell us basically uh, what kind of uh, pieces of this new energy pop puzzle are you guys working on? Well, we're working on, <clears throat> to start, uh, coal plants. And the reason we're focusing on coal plants is because they're such a huge pro part of the problem, and they're so easy to fix. Coal plants are the biggest CO2 emitters we have in the, world, in the country in, and in the world. And they represent roughly the same amount of CO2 as is emitted by the entire transportation sector. But of course, because they're stationary sources, they're easier to fix. Now, half of our electricity comes from coal, uh, coal-fired power. And because coal is so dirty, it emits 40% of all CO2. Mm -hmm. uh, Two-thirds of all uh, sulfur dioxide, which is acid rain, and a significant part of nitrogen oxides, which are also a big polluter, and a third of mercury. And so there are many reasons to not build new power coal plants and to cut down coal plants the power that we have right now. Um, it just makes sense. Also, we're in a very wonderful and interesting time in our history where renewable energy is cheaper. And so if we take into account all of these costs that we haven't taken into account, and if we look at the rising construction costs for new coal plants, if we look at CO2 costs, uh, there's a lot of talk about cap and trade and carbon tax. If we take into consideration the rapidly rising cost of natural gas, which has risen 15% per year in the last decade, then renewable energy looks better and better. Wind and solar, of course, have zero cost. So you're saying we have, we don't have just enough energy just to supplement fossil fuel. We actually have more than we need. In fact, so much so it sounds like we can be selling energy to other states, is that correct? Looking at this map that comes from the Governor's Energy Office, we can see the pink areas over here on the east side of the so this, state. This is the, the Front Range Mountains right here? Right, and Denver's right about here. This is Denver? Right. Okay. And we look at the pink areas out on the eastern plains. Those are our really excellent wind areas. What the Governor's Energy Office with the National Renewable Energy Lab says is that when we add up those wind areas, we can produce about 96 gigawatts, and we've only been so just with wind alone, we've got seven times, what, or six, six or seven times what we need uh, just from wind energy. Right. And wind has what people refer to as the intermittency problem. That's being addressed in a number of ways. But first of all, let me also talk about the solar problem. It's a gorgeous solar day out today. And this is a map that also comes from the Governor's Energy Office. Yeah, and show us where Denver is just for the camera here. So Denver is right about there. So this is maybe the New Mexico border right here. And now. there's New Mexico, and over okay. here are Nebraska and Kansas, and up here is Wyoming. And the way they've done the colors on this is that the more yellow um, you get, the stronger the solar resource. The solar potential, a conservative estimate of the solar potential is we have 200 gigawatts. So let's say our state's using 12 gigawatts uh, with solar and wind, talking close to 300 gigawatts, that's, how many states can that be? I mean, that's probably the Midwest. That's money in the bank, right? Yeah, that's and, a and, lot of states. And what Nancy and I are working to do, along with many other people, it's been a really wonderful thing, a very exciting time for all of us working in this area, is working to unlock this potential. And uh, we have had tremendous support. We also want to recommend and to sort of acknowledge the work that Exxon Energy has done under their new CEO, they've come to recognize that we're moving into a carbon-constrained world for both environmental and economic reasons. And they have turned a very important corner. They've got very competent and capable people in very key positions. And they, they're moving forward. They're doing everything they can to act as leaders for utilities in this century. If we know all this energy is out here, you know, 20, 30 times more than the state needs, why are we not getting, why are the energy companies only taking baby steps towards tapping on that resource? Well, I'll start with 
start. Uh, I think some of it is mindset. And, you know, we, we've always done this way, things this way, and so we're going to continue to do it this way. And we were basically making a shift, like Leslie said, from the typewriter to the computer. And it's a paradigm shift. And so we're looking at um, going from a ch cheap fossil fuels, where really the cost of the fuel was minimal, to an era where the cost of these fuels, you know, there's the hidden costs like global warming, like CO2, like mercury. But there's also the fact that fossil fuels are increasing rapidly in cost right now. For example, natural gas, which we're turning to in a big way in this country because a lot of coal, new coal plants are being shut down, has been escalating at 15% per year. And so with coal plants being shut down, we're turning to natural gas, but natural gas fuel escalation is very high. Also, ratepayers pay the cost of the fuel. So that the energy company, Excel Energy, for example, they don't pay any more money if natural gas costs $12 a million BTU versus $8 a million BTU. It goes directly through to ratepayers. So the exciting thing about wind and about solar is that the fuel is free. So when we look out in 2020 and we try to guess, gee, what's natural gas going to cost in 2020? Or what's coal going to cost in 2020? With wind and solar, we don't have to think about that. It's, a fr it's free and there's no pollution penalty. Guys, give us a, a, a final thought. Well, thanks, Wade, so much for having us. My name again, Nancy LaPlaca, and you can reach me, Nancy, at energyjustice.net. That's dot N-E-T. Or give me a call, 303-588-3937. We're happy to have anybody who just wants to be informed or help out, uh, contact us anytime. And the website again, energyjustice, E-N-E-R-G-Y, J-U-S-T-I-C-E dot N-E-T. And I'm Leslie Westrom, and again, thank you so much, Wade. Uh, this is how the word gets out. Uh, the uh, coal, oil, and natural gas industry has lots of money for messages, but this is the way the message gets to the people. We want to thank you. You can reach me at 303-245-8637 or L Lustrum, L-E-G-L-U-S-T-R-O-M at gmail.com. Our website is www.cleanenergyaction.org. And again, if you have any students that want to write stories on the past of solar power and the history of solar, just want to recommend the Austria website, www.ausra.com. Great materials for everything from third graders to grad students. And again, just encourage everybody to do what you can and uh, you know, look to the bright future that awaits us. We're really excited and we all can help make it happen by keeping that vision in our minds seeing the positive future that's out there uh, as we move past the fossil <coughs> fuel era. And uh, for everybody out there listening, or for people who are seeing this on the blog sites, um, imagine in your mind, if you would, what your family's life is going to be like. Uh, your parents, uh, you know, they, parents and grandparents have had, had a great life, and they've done a, a lot of things by providing you know, uh, a legacy for us. But one of the things we need to provide for our children is a legacy uh, of a sustainable economy, good jobs, and a future that does not uh, depend on economics that don't make any sense in a global market anymore. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to telling my children and my grandchildren that, you know, in some way, we were a part of a generation that changed the way America operates to make us an example to the world on how to make peace with our neighbors and to share the resources that are plentiful on uh, this great creation that we live on. Uh, signing off, this is uh, Wade Norris for UltimatePolitics.net, and you can check us out on uh, www.UltimatePolitics.net. You can email me, Wade at UltimatePolitics.net, and this is 1510 a.m. and 1570 a.m. in Denver, Colorado, Mile High Sports Radio, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Well done. Great job. Well done. Great job, Wade. Great job, Wade. That was great. Yeah, nice. Right. Nice.